How many came to worship the Lord this morning? Amen. I'm worried about everybody coming here this morning, let alone worship this morning. Amen. So let's lift up holy hands to a holy God. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, O oh God. We bless you, O oh God. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your kindness. We thank you for your victory in our lives. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your awesome power. We thank you for your patience. We thank you for your kindness in helping us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Without you, we can do nothing, but we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Hallelujah. We invite you to pour yourself in. Pour yourself into our midst here today. Pour in your love, pour in your patience, pour in your kindness, pour in your restoration in the name of Jesus. We resist the enemy. We take authority over the prince and the power of the air over the Damascus. We command that every demon be bound that inhabits these these buildings. And Lord, we ask you to rescue the hurting, deliver the oppressed. We come against the spirit of oppression and depression. Thank you for shining light into our hearts. Help us not be afraid. Help us to just trust in you. Trust in you. Hallelujah. And help us to know you've got everything under control. Hallelujah. 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 It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to tell Him at His word, just to rest upon His promise, just Wow. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh, to trust Him more. Help me to trust you more and more and more, God. Help me trust you. For you have not given us a spirit of fear or anxiety or worry, but of love and power and a sound mind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Help us to lean on you and not on our own understanding. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, why don't we greet one another? Ask the person nearby you, were you here on time this morning?
a long time since we sang this song. Woo, but this song ministered to me a good long while back because remember what I told you. There's times when you just need to praise Him. But we just sometimes don't want to praise Him by ourselves. It's like being on the dance floor all alone. We need the Lord to join us. And then it gets to be that much more fun when our brothers and sisters in Christ get right alongside us and praise with us. Amen. I know of some trials and some troubles in this place today, but there's probably quite a few I don't know about. So when we sing this song, you may be feeling really good today. And if you feel really good today, come on and dance with me. If you don't feel so good, there's going to be some people in this place that's going to praise with you today. The first move is on your part. But God's going to meet us right there. And the encouragement is going to come from the body of Christ. Because there's things you don't know about. You may feel really good in the Holy Ghost today. And I'm thankful for you because we need you. Amen. That's right.
Hallelujah. Thank you for making all things new. Thank you for a new day. Amen. Hallelujah. You grateful for a new day in him? Hallelujah. The king is here right now. His presence is flowing in this place right now. Hallelujah. What a privilege it is to live for our king. We have a king. A king eternal. Hallelujah. He's higher than any of our situations. It can bring us up above them. Help us to get through them. Help us to cope with them in them. Become more solid, more stable Christians. He's a wonderful father. Hallelujah. He loves his children. Hallelujah. And he's manifested himself here in a wonderful way. Amen. We're going to go to him in prayer right now. You may be seated. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have two victory reports. Josh and I is thanking God uh, for being pre-approved. He put a contract on his house, on a new house, and uh, he's been pre-approved and looking forward to this opportunity. He's a faithful child of God. He's here every Sunday morning helping with the setup. And God is rewarding him in a big way. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Ali is thanking God for a new grandson, Isaac Hackey. And we rejoice with our sister and her family. Praise God. Um, we have several prayer needs here. Brother Smith, we want to pray for him. He's right over here. And believe it or not, he had gallbladder surgery on Friday. This is a miracle in my eyes. <laughs> And uh, we want God to touch him. Brothers, get around him. Let's anoint him and get him totally healed in Jesus' name. Praise God. Also, we want to continue to pray for Sister Nita. She's home now and doing much better. Uh, but we want to continue to pray for her that God gets her all the way through and healed. Sister Flo's having a problem today, and we want God to touch her. And Brother Goba's here somewhere. Let's get a couple brothers around him. He's pretty sick and wants God to touch his, him in a very big way. Uh, Leopold Wally for the Frederick family, they're homesick. Gerald Maddox, uh, healing for Latoy Smith, it's his niece. Uh, Rose and Rimshiro, traveling mercies, we want to pray that for them. Rodine Thompson for Alexia Wright, special need. Sister Thompson for Diane Rogers is having a procedure on Thursday. We want God to have favor upon her in that. Uh, Sonia Thompson for Anne Marie Richards uh, needs a blood transfusion. Holy Cross Hospital, we want God to touch her. And Ashley Harriton for, well, actually, this is a, a victory report. She's starting work tomorrow at UP, USPS, and we'll, she's rejoicing. We rejoice with her also. Pastor? Woo! I want to pray for Brother Garza. He was in that bad car accident, and he's home, and we want God to continue to heal him. Sister Hicks is uh, going through a procedure tomorrow. It's very serious. We want God to intercede and touch her in a big way and heal her. All right. If you put a prayer request in, please stand. Or if you have a prayer need, did not put a prayer request in, I want you to stand also at this time so people could see you and come to you. All right. We got several standing here. All right. Saints, let's go to them and let's lift them in their need up to the Lord. Everybody stand right now. Brother, find a brother. Sister, find a sister. Let's lift one another up to the Lord together. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your amazing manifestation of your love here today, God. 
thank you for moving in this place in such a real special way thank you for being our king thank you for leading us and guiding us in such a significant way God hallelujah it's such a privilege we honor you we thank you for moving in this place today God thank you for touching each and every need we lift up sister Nita to you God flow to her right now God heal this rash God that has surfaced in Jesus name touch sister Flo help her God in Jesus name touch brother Gobo we command this infection in his system to be gone to loose him and let him go in Jesus name in Jesus name thank you for healing brother Smith totally hallelujah making him brand new in Jesus name in Jesus name touch Anne Marie Richards God and Diane Rogers healing to them thank you for helping Lexia right God with this special need thank you for touching Rose and Arnold God that they have safe travels God, thank you for healing Latoy Smith, Brother Maddox's niece, God, in Jesus' name. We thank you for healing the Frederick family, God, Shante and the kids, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, we praise you for looking out for us, God, for helping us overcome every obstacle in our lives, for your healing virtue that's in this place right now that's touching, healing, Thank you for your miracles. Thank you for your blessings in our lives. Thank you for the victory reports that we heard today and the ones we're going to hear next week. God, we just lift you up. We magnify you. We praise you. We thank you for the victory. Hallelujah. 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 Let's thank him for the victory. Let's clap our hands. Let's and honor him and worship him and thank him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Let's clap our hands one more time to Him and thank Him for being so amazing in this place today. In Jesus' name, praise God. Praise God. Amen. Shake two people's hands right beside you. Tell them you're glad to be in the house of the Lord. Come on, tell them you're glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Sister Libby, could you sign happy birthday? Happy birthday. Yes, we need you to come. Everybody join me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Sister Libby. Happy birthday to you. In thinking about my pastor's wife, I could not help but think about the beauty of a rose. Have you ever noticed how a rose, it just stands there, attached to the vine? It doesn't need anything to prop it up. It stands there quietly, beautifully. And that is Sister Libby. Amen. 
she stays strong, attached to the vine. She doesn't need to be propped up. She doesn't seek glory. Yet she stands year after year strong, a beautiful woman of God that does not waver in her faith. Amen? She is not withered one day and strong the next. And I thank God for her consistency and character and faith. Another thing about the rose, the rose does not say a word, nor does it brag about itself. Its beauty is displayed without a spoken word. Amen? And Sister Libby, she doesn't have to say a word. Her beauty speaks for itself. The beauty and grace in the life of a woman of God is seen without a spoken word. Sister Libby has demonstrated to us what a woman of God looks like, how she talks, and how she lives. She doesn't have to speak it. Her life displays it. Amen? Another thing about the rose, it blesses so many without expecting anything in return. And just like the rose, Sister Libby blesses many. She gives, she serves, and quietly ministers without expecting in return. You might not see her out in the open or hear, see her here behind a mic, but she blesses behind the scenes. She may not receive much in terms of recognition, but she deserves it. Amen. And she has more patience than anybody I know. More patience. My fa and lastly, my favorite thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pastor, I wasn't talking about I was talking about me. I was talking about me. <laughs> and my very favorite thing about the rose is the fragrance. When a rose is fragrant, you can smell it from across the room. You cannot help but turn aside when you get near that fragrance. And ladies, you know what it's like when you walk into a room and you smell these beautiful roses? What do you do? You walk over, you stick your nose in, and you go, oh. that is what a beautiful rose is like. So that is, that's like some have the beauty of the Rose of Sharon. Have you ever heard that saying? Some have the beauty of the Rose of Sharon but some have its fragrance also. In other words, some Christians, they have the beauty of the rose of Sharon. That is like a rose that's beautiful, but when you get close to it, there is no fragrance. It doesn't make you want to go back to be near the beautiful aroma. Ever go up to a rose and there's no smell? Okay, but Sister Libby is the type that she has the beauty of the Rose of Sharon, but she has the fragrance. She has that grace and that beauty and that spiritual mom-type person that you want to go back to. You want to get close to her. You want to be near her. Amen? Amen? She has the aroma of a woman of God that walks in grace and has a loving spirit that draws you near. The aroma of a loving spirit that does no harm. So, my advice to you today, take time to smell the roses. Take time to get near her, to know her, and allow her to bless your life. Amen. So Sister Libby, we love you. And after service in the cafeteria, we have cake and punch, and we all want to love you, hug you, shake your hand, and wish you happy birthday. All right, bless you. And if I could add one more thing to the rose. As a son, all the thorns were in the right places. <laughs> and I learned to not kick against the pricks. Happy birthday, Mom. We love you.
Amen. So many of you are thinking we're all going to be dismissed. <laughs> foolish. <laughs> foolish, foolish people. <laughs> we're going to have a abbreviated service. Foolish of me to even say that. But immediately after the service, we invite everyone to come to the cafeteria, which is just down the, the main hall to the left, <clears throat> and enjoy a time of uh, light refreshments, cake and punch, and a time to uh, mingle and see if you can get one of those thorns. I probably have knocked them all off, actually. Get close to the rose. Amen? Amen. God bless each and every one of you. We love you. I don't know if she would like me to say this part, but the reason we're sort of making a big, bigger deal than normal is that this is her 60th birthday. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and in our culture, the American culture, um, agedness or getting older is not so honored. It's youth that's honored. In the Orient, in the Asian world, it, and many other places in the world, the more aged a person becomes, the more honor that they receive because they're recognized as having wisdom and knowledge and all, had already poured out their lives and blessed people. And uh, America's got it absolutely backwards. And so we honor you I honor you, this congregation honors you, and we love you. <laughs> so please join us in the cafeteria. We've uh, got some more time from the uh, school system, and uh, we can go as long as 3 o'clock. There's not going to be a program or anything. You don't have to stay that long, but we have it for that long. So please spend some time with us and, uh, and enjoy the day. Your life group leaders presumably have connected with you concerning your life group. Maybe there are some time changes or whatever. And uh, if you have not been contacted, see your co life group leader after service as to what's happening with your group. Well, Brother and Sister Powell, are you here today? Brother and Sister Powell emailed me, uh, and I wanted to honor that, and I didn't get to my notes quick enough. I don't know the details on this, but their son has become bedridden. Uh, I don't know the deal with it. But uh, he emailed me with a prayer request that we pray for the Powell family. And if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to honor that, even though we've already passed that point. But if it was me, I'd like us to take a moment. And um, would you pray with the Powells for me? How about Pastor Sean, would you lead us in a prayer? Amen. Why don't we, why don't we stand for a moment? This is a... a it's a more serious situation than we understand and recognize as a body, but we want to bind together. How many, how many would enjoy the binding together if we were in a situation? Amen. Let's, let's lift our hands and pray right now. We love you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, your goodness and your mercy in our life. We recognize, Lord, that there are things outside of our ability and understanding. We come alongside the Powell family, Lord Jesus. We ask God that you would minister to them strength. We ask God that you would minister to them grace, Lord Jesus. Healing right now for their son, Lord God. I ask God that you would bring wisdom to their family, Lord. That they would be able to see the steps that need to be taken, God. That you would give them the energy, Lord God, on this journey, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. God, we want to be an active part of their life, Lord. We want to come alongside in a very active way, God. Show us, Lord Jesus, how we can show them, Lord, your love in a practical way. We thank you, Lord, for your hand 
that's in their life, healing and touching their son, encouraging and encompassing that household, Lord Jesus. We thank you for it, God. In your precious name we pray. And everybody say amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Well, this is Palm Sunday, and in recognition of Palm Sunday, why don't you all lift your hands and show each other your palms. Okay. That takes care of that. <laughs> That's a good idea. Um, we're going to receive our offering this morning. Amen. Amen. And I think the, the major motivation that uh, motivated me when I was a very young Christian, my wife and I started tithing just weeks after our um, conversion, and God filled us with the Holy Ghost, and we were baptized. And I was just absorbed, and hopefully I still am, with a passion and a love for God for bringing me out of darkness into his marvelous light, changing my life, giving me purpose. I was nobody going nowhere. I'm still nobody, but I'm going somewhere. And uh, I'm glad that I am. And my love for him is the central part of my life. It's my core. It's my desire to please him. One of the things that I honor and treasure so much in my wife is that she seeks to please me, and hopefully I seek to please her. That's what makes a marriage strong. Recently I was talking to somebody whose marriage is not going so well, and the issue was they weren't pleasing each other. And when you seek to please yourself, that's called selfishness. But when you seek to please your partner, that's called selflessness, less self. And my wife has just been a tremendous blessing to me for these many soon-to-be 43 years. Soon, very soon to be. And um, actually, I'm trying to t receive an offering here. And, getting all mushy, but um, that's what motivated me and my wife to start tithing. We didn't make very much money, but we tithed, and um, God just continued to bless and bless and bless and bless, and I tithe to honor him. The Bible tells us to honor him with the first fruits, the first fruits of all our increase. And it's a holy thing. It's a holy thing. Because God said, if you do this, and I don't know of anything else, he said if we would do, that he would do what he promised he does with tithing. And that is to open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there not be room enough to receive it. What a promise. And it's a love covenant that if we do our part, he will do his part. Very, very, very important. And it should not be done lightly. It should be done with holiness and appreciation. And there's nobody, including me here today, that can afford it. If you look on paper and work out the details, you'll never be able to f afford it because there's always something, right? It's not about affording it. It's about obeying God. And you can't step into the supernatural. Who was I just talking about this week? Who uh, they were, they're tithers, they're faithful, and they went through some financial stuff and they told me I don't even know how we got through that how did I don't how did that ever happen because God has a way of doing the supernatural when we are obedient and trusting God and doing what he calls us to do he makes a way and you might even not even notice how he did it 
but it all comes out. And it's about faith and stepping into the supernatural of God. And when people don't because of fear or unbelief or just plain old disobedience, they don't know what they're missing and don't ever experience it. And so we heard of one church, Pastor Sean, wherever you are, fixing something or doing something. Um, a church made a, a, a deal with their congregation if, for those that weren't tithing. That if you tithe for, what was it, three months, I think it was, and your financial life isn't better in three months, if you tithe faithfully for three months, we'll give you all your tithe back. And they've done that for numbers and numbers of people, and they've never had to give the tithe back. Because in doing it consistently, God just makes a way. Good things start happening. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. And so it should be something of joy. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. So today as we give, let's, let's make it worship. To God, because that's what we're doing. We're honoring God. Amen. Some of you, many of you are involved in missions, and when you give missions money, it goes straight to our headquarters and dispensed to missionaries all around the world. I don't make it, I should make more issue out of it. We have two missionaries from our church, one in India and one in the Philippines. And the one in India got saved in our church back in the 70s and is now with his wife in India. The other was moved to our church and was with us for numbers of years and are in the Philippines. So when you give to missions, you're directly helping both of those families because we support them and help them. Isn't that good? And we also have uh, Chris and Dunka Robinson, who are work for the State Department, but are pastors in, where are they at? Austria, pastoring a church while they're working with the um, um, State Department. And so we have missionaries in three different parts of the world, straight from this church, and they were saved in our church. And so... It doesn't all stay with us. It goes out and blesses other people when you give missions. And we support numbers and numbers of missionaries, and we don't want to stop doing that. Amen. Amen? Because God is blessed, and missionaries are helped. Make sense? Yeah. All right. So if you need an envelope, our ushers have one for you. Please designate what your giving would be. We received another. I think it was 17 uh, no, $1,500 this past week for the seed offering. People are continuing to contribute, and I appreciate that so much. And as you know, we're very, very close to getting in our new building and saying goodbye, world, goodbye. Amen. And that'll be a good day, won't it? Then we'll have a whole, that'll be then a whole other series of things of getting used to and figuring out and getting straightened up. So, Lord, we come today loving you. We're here today because we love you. And we love you to the point that we obey you to please you because you're such a good God and a good friend and a patient father and a forgiving father, a correcting father. Thank you. I love you. I'm glad I know you like I do. Thank you for being good to me and my family. Thank you for every blessing that you've bestowed upon us. Thank you for uplifting us and encouraging us all. You're awesome. You're a great God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's go ahead and pass that. Plates, and we're going to ask the choir not to come up today to kind of shave some time here. Um, next week is Easter Sunday. 
And we have some more uh, of these cards that we're asking you to take out and give to people as you invite them to church. We're hoping that everybody brings somebody. Surely you can find somebody. We would like everybody to bring somebody to Easter. It's the easiest time of the year to get somebody to church. How many is excited about bringing somebody new and exposing them to the presence of God? How many are bringing somebody? Would you wave your hand so we can see? How about over here? Over here, you're bringing somebody? We also have, and they just got here. I don't know why they were so late. We have a bunch of door hangers. And if you would be so involved and desiring to touch lives, if you take a bunch of these, they're going to be out here and back here and uh, by the outside from the uh, cafeteria, these door hangers. Also, if you're without a job or you have a job but you want to make some more money, we've got a lot of these to put out, and if you would like to uh, make some money and do something for God, please get with me after church today. We'll get you a bunch and uh, organize uh, passing these out to uh, our neighbors. Very, very important. If you are an altar worker, I want you to be praying this week. I would love to see some people come to Jesus next Sunday. I like people to come to Jesus every Sunday. And so next Sunday is particularly important. So please be very sensitive and um, uh, wanting to touch somebody's life. Please don't forget to see me if you would uh, like to be paid to pass some of these door hangers out. Okay? If this is your first time today here, we're glad for you to come. We thank you for taking the time to be with us. We have a gift basket for you right outside at our reception afterwards with a lot of good Bible stuff and uh, want you to be blessed. Also, we're having a Timothy class, and that's going very well, and we're enjoying it. But we also have the books that we're using. If you would like one, if you're not in the class, but you would like to have one of those, you uh, can get them out front. There is a cost to that. And also the DVD, this is a free to you, of the service that we had all the healings about a month ago. If you would like to have one of these, they're free right outside. Uh, just pick one up. And is anybody here in close proximity, proximity that would like one of these so I can throw it to you? I don't want to throw it way out there. Anybody want these? You want one? Okay. Can you catch it? All right. Did he catch it? Anybody else want one? Here we go. Ready? Don't let me hurt you here. Whoop. That was a curve pitch. All right. All right. Stretch forth your hands toward our offering. Let's ask the Lord to bless our giving. Father, we love you and praise you. We worship you. We honor you in this giving. We thank you for the ability to partner with you in the moving forward of our church. God, thank you for blessings. Thank you for being our king. Thank you for leading us to green pastures, leading us beside still waters. Thank you for your favor in our lives. We bless you. We honor you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Morado for reminding me. For those of you who are new, we want to invite you to our, what we call the journey. This is the study that we uh, ask people to go through to become uh, oriented to our church. This is the pathway to um, membership and ministry. Very, very important. You can cut off the back uh, perforated form in the back of your bulletin and fill in the information. We'll be starting two weeks from yesterday and we'll be meeting at our Gaithersburg location at 10 o'clock in the morning, April 6th. Two weeks, one week after Easter. Very, very important because we only do this like three times, four times a year depending on the people that we have. So this is a time to jump in and get on board and the first 
lesson is our orientation, and we'll be feeding you lunch, and you'll be get done the whole first module of the journey, and you will grow, and you can become a general member in our church at that point if you so desire. So we really want you to get involved with that, and uh, we want to bless you, and Pastor Sean and I teach that class, and we have a really great time with with our students. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> How are y'all doing today? <laughs> Good. <laughs> forevermore no other name that 
amen. Let's stand together. Go to the Word of God. In 2 Timothy, chapter 1. 2 Timothy, chapter 1. I come to this pulpit in the name of Jesus. The name which is above every name that is named. Am I right? It's above every name that is named. Chapter 1, in verse, let's start at verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables. Excuse me, I lost my place. Well, let's step down, step down to verse 6. Oh, I'm in 1 Timothy. It's 2 Timothy. Very good. That's the first time I ever did that. Let's just go to verse 6. My bad, sorry. Verse 7, 6 and 7. Would you read it out loud with me? Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance, meaning I keep reminding you, I'm reminding you, that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I like verse 8. It says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of of God. In other words, it's, sometimes it's going to hurt, but just trust me, trust God, you'll get through it. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. I started this a couple of weeks ago. I want to go back to it with your permission and your help. And I'm titling this, Will You Stir Yourself? Will You Stir Yourself? About the best thing that a pastor can do is stir people to get stirred. To encourage people to encourage themselves. Remember, Paul, excuse me, David encouraged himself. It boils down to our responsibility individually to walk this walk, to work out our salvation with fear and trembling to seek out God and continue to walk with Him and live for Him. And so I encourage you and stir you to help you stir yourself. Ultimately, nobody can stir you but you. You make the choice whether I stir or don't stir. So the question we're asking is, will you stir 
yourself. Father, we honor you, bless you, and thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for your beautiful presence. Help us today. Help me to deliver what you want delivered. Thy will be done. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. And we always seem to be here, Pastor Sean. Never enough time. So, looking at it one more time. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou, that you would stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. I'm reminding you, don't forget, he say, And I continue to remind you to stir up the gift. I had a thought that crossed my mind this week. And I've been wondering it. And I'm wondering, in my own life and, and yours and our church, do we come to church on Sunday to get what God has for us and kind of forget about it all the way to the next Sunday rather than living out a day-to-day -day walk with God, sort of leaving God back at, the high school, and going through life without really connecting on a real viable relationship with God. In other words, do we just get stirred when we come here? Or do we have that time like David did, thank you, when life was really beating him up. As a matter of fact, David's worst trial happened just before his greatest experience. He was an outlaw. He was running from the, the vengeance of King Saul. He has a band of followers and those that were loyal to him. And they came back from a reconnaissance. You'll find this in the last couple of chapters of First Samuel. And after coming back from a patrol, as they approached the camp where the wives and the children were, they saw smoke rising in the atmosphere. And as they got to the village, the village had been burned out. And the wives and the children had been taken hostage by the Midianites, heathens. They could only imagine what was happening to their children and to their wives. And there was great disturbance amongst them. They began to weep and cry for their families. And the Bible says they were greatly distressed. And then they got angry, and they began to blame David for the trouble that they were in. Their valuables were stolen. Their uh, roofs over their heads were destroyed, and their families were in the hands of awful people, ungodly people. And the Bible says that they began to uh, blame David. And they picked up stones to stone him. They were going to take out their grief on him and blame him for what had happened. And he 
moved to his tent or wherever he was, and he put on the mantle, that robe, a prayer robe, and he began, the Bible says, and that David, he, it says that David was greatly distressed about this, and his life was actually in danger from the people that he loved and loved him. They'd kind of lost it. Their grief had driven them to a place of wanting vengeance, and he was the only one available. And the Bible says that he went in there and he encouraged himself in the Lord. There was no choir or preacher. He had to encourage himself. It comes to that with us. Eventually, other people's encouraging words and how precious they are, it still boils down to you and I individually. When life is bad, and dark and overwhelming and bad things do happen to good people and I've never been able to get on a very long run of everything is going good I've been on several long runs where things weren't going so good matter of fact I made up my mind son in Jesus name I'm not going to the property this week all week help me do it because it's driving me crazy watching how slow they're working. Huh? It seems like they take their breaks when I show up. And they all gather in a little group and talk and have a good time. And seems like that's what happens. And then I leave and come back, and now they're having lunch. And I never really see them working. So I'm not going this week for my own mental health. <laughs> and so it comes down to when life is dark and pressure is on, that we have to find ourselves in a closet of prayer individually. Seeking God for help and encouraging himself. He not only prayed to God, but he also talked to himself. Sometimes praying to God is not enough. You've got to talk to yourself and decide, do I want to stay here? Do I want to die here? If it's bad, do I want this to be the end of it all? Or I choose another path. I refuse to let this darkness wipe me out. Even though these people that used to love me want to kill me, I'm going to just encourage myself because God didn't bring me here to drop me off right here. And God didn't bring you from where he's brought you to leave you right where you are right now if you're dealing with some trials and some struggles. Life is just like that. that. Struggles are part of it. And sometimes we can get kind of down about it. This sequestering that's going on and some of our people are going to be furloughed and, and all these things become very, very distressful. And if we're not careful, we can fall into a funk, distress. Brother Mike? Looking for a job? You got anything going with that? Uh, okay, a date to start? Oh, so it looks like you got a new job? Okay, not quite official yet, but it looks good. Awesome. Let's give the Lord some applause for that. Please keep me up to date. All right, I'm praying for you. Okay, all right, I understand that. I understand that. But God is able. But what happened there with David? He was in a, what I call an intersection. That what you do right now 
is going to determine your future. David could give it up, maybe even be killed, the end of his career, if you will. He'd come so far in this time of trial, in this time of, of heaviness, knowing that he had been anointed by God, yet he's in this fix that even his uh, own are turning against him. But he refused to accept that as his future. You and I come to places where it would be easier to quit or seem like it, easier to give up and easy to, to just cave than it would be to just get a hold of God and face the music or face the problems. We've got to make those decisions that this is not going to be my end. I don't know how it's going to work out, but I am not accepting defeat. I'm accepting that I still have a God that knows where I am and knows who I am and has not left me and not forsaken me. I don't care how many rocks are picked up. God is still in control even when it doesn't look like it or when it doesn't feel like it. He's still in control. And I choose to encourage myself rather to give in to the depression of the moment. Did you hear what I said? I choose to encourage myself rather than give in to the depression and the discouragement and just collapse. Greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. And I've got to stir something up inside of me or the fire's going to go out and what's going to be the end to that? Amen. When it looks like going the right way is the hard way, don't forget the right way is always the best way and it's the only way that's going to keep you on the same path with God. I like everybody to lift your hands and give God a shout right now. Come on, there's a David somewhere. There's a David in here that you need to decide. I refuse to lose my praise. I refuse to lose my love for God. I refuse to give up right here. I'm going to encourage myself. I'm going to encourage myself. God helped me yesterday. He'll help me today. And he'll help me today. And he'll help me tomorrow. I refuse to give in to the darkness. I refuse to give in to the darkness. There needs to be a mindset. I will not go back. There's nowhere to go. There's nobody to go to except continue to walk with God. I'm glad God has his hand on the thermometer because the Bible says he won't test us beyond our ability to, to handle it. He may test us beyond our willingness he may test us beyond what we want to deal with, but he won't test us beyond our ability to handle it with him. You can't do it with yourself only. You see, brothers and sisters, we have a role to play. It's not about God doing everything and us doing nothing. We have a role to play. And if we don't do our part, and that's exactly what the enemy was trying to put on David, that David would just give up in that tent and give up in that situation. And it would have been easy to do, but he had a role to play. And if you read that passage, you'll see that when he encouraged himself in the Lord, then God spoke to him 
and gave him a plan on what to do. God didn't speak to him, and then David encouraged himself. David encouraged himself, and then God spoke. We each have a role to play. God has a role to play, and you have a role to play. The key factor there is knowing what to do and how to respond. And I'm reminding you again and again and again to stir up the gift. That's what David did when he went in there. And then God told him to pursue. David asked the question, should I pursue? Now, he went into the tent defeated. Now, as he encouraged himself in the Lord, he asked the question, should I chase after this group? Or should I not? And God spoke instantaneously. He said, pursue, for thou shalt overcome. You're going to have victory. Just get out and go after them. You'll find them, and you'll get everything back. Now, I love this part. This is the part I like the most. When he opened the tent, the Bible says that the 600 men rode with him. Now, these were the men that were, had stones in their hands when he went into the tent. When he went into the tent, thank you, son. When he went into the tent, he looked like defeat. Rocks in their hands, ready to stone him to death. That's how he went into the tent. In the tent, he encouraged himself in the Lord. He stirred himself up. He fanned the flame. Hallelujah. He resuscitated his faith. And he, and he heard from God. And when he got out of the tent, all the men rode with him. In other words, while God was working on them or him on inside the tent, he was working on everybody else outside the tent. And when he came out of the tent and he jumped on his horse, everybody jumped on their horse too, and they ran and they found the enemy. And they attacked them and destroyed them, and they got all their wives back. They got all their children back. They got all the stuff that was stolen, and guess what else? Not only did they get their stuff back, they got everything else these guys had stolen from everybody else, and they had more at the end of it than they had before, amen, and they were able to send gifts up to Jerusalem. In other words, they got into a dark place, they encouraged themselves, God took care of the problem, they chased after the enemy, they got a defeat, and they wound up wealthier than they could have ever imagined that they'd be. The trial was a doorway into greater victory. I'm trying to tell somebody, if you're under it a little bit, if things aren't going so good, encourage yourself in the Lord. God has a victory in mind for you. And if you'll follow him, encourage yourself and walk with God, you'll see God unfold more and more blessings in your life. I wish some would just stand up and shout amen and stir yourself up because God's got more for you. God has more for you than you have ever imagined. Come on, somebody, just keep stirring, keep stirring, keep stirring, keep stirring. stirring. I refuse to die. I refuse to give up. I refuse to just lay down and quit. Come on, some of you young people, you're some of the finest people in this world. And the devil would love for you to get so discouraged that you just give up on God. But if you'll fan the flame, if you'll rekindle the fire, if you'll make a decision, I will not give up Greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, it's on you. I can't do any more. You stir yourself up right now. I can only stir you so you stir yourself. I can't stir you but I can stir you so you stir yourself. 
I can't stir you, but I can stir you to stir yourself. Oh, I feel like punching the devil right in the face. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Well, you know what? I feel like running myself. Excuse me. Time out for a shout. Woo. Look out, young people. You're about to get hit by a freight train. Hey, baby. All I can do is stir you to stir yourself. You got to stir yourself. You got to make that proclamation. Do you want to be a loser or do you want to be a winner? You may be seated. If you want to sit down, go right ahead. But something is stirring in this house right now. God is doing something right now. Is brother and sister Macaulay here? Macaulay's brother and sister Macaulay. Wave your arm. Wave your hand. There you are. Okay, raise it real, real. In the name of Jesus. They've been praying with me about a situation. I believe God is going to turn that situation around. Because the devil works with discouragement. The devil puts discouragement on us. God puts encouragement on us. But you got to stir yourself to get that encouragement. Amen. And brother and sister McCauley, just between us, we know who, what we're talking about. Right? In the name of Jesus Christ, we refuse to lose. In the name of Jesus, turn that situation around. We're not going to be discouraged. We're going to be encouraged. Why don't you take somebody by the hand and pray for them that God would help them stir themselves. Stir yourselves. Stir yourselves. Jesus. Let the devil know you got a made up mind. Let the enemy know you're not putting up with it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. So David got this incredible victory, but it wasn't an incredible victory without an incredible trial. Trials are blessings in disguise. It just depends on how you handle it. When he got 
the gifts. And he got the victory. And he sent gifts forward that ended the second to the last chapter of 1 Samuel. In the next chapter, the last chapter of 1 Samuel, Saul was killed. The man that was trying to kill David after X amount of years died in the next chapter. What if David had not encouraged himself? What would he have missed? God had a pen in his hand, if you will, waiting to see what David is going to do. And then he'll write the next chapter. When you're going through a dark time, God has a pen in his hand. And what you do right there is going to determine what the next chapter is going to be in your life. And so the next chapter, Saul was killed. End of First Samuel. In the book of 2 Samuel, in the second chapter, David took the throne of Israel. He was two chapters away from the greatest victory of his life. But it looked like the worst moment of his life. And how he responded to it was going to determine the future. He was this close to taking the throne. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I say we should stir ourselves. I say we should encourage ourselves. God didn't bring me here. I don't think David probably said these words, but the spirit of it was there. God didn't bring me here to let me die under a pile of stones. God didn't bring me here to, to, to have failure. I'm going to encourage myself. Oh, my goodness gracious. I'm going to just make myself feel better. I got nobody around here to make me feel better. I think I'll just make myself feel better. How come the pastor hasn't called me? Maybe the pastor's told you to stir yourself, and now it's time for you to stir yourself. How come my life leader hadn't come? How about this? How about nobody comes to my door? How come nobody's knocked on my door? Maybe it's time for you to take it into your own hands and have a moment with you and God and the devil and get it worked out and get it done and make up your mind. I am not going to give in. I am not going to give up. No matter what is going on, I am going to live for God. And God is going to deliver me. God is going to deliver me. I, I don't know how long it will take me to preach all this that I've got. Maybe I won't even touch it again. I've preached so many half sermons. I preached them about as long as I thought I could do and left the rest. I got about 10 of those waiting for me to get to the second part. Maybe that's, this is one of those. But brothers and sisters, it comes down to you individually. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Joshua told the people what he was going to do. He said, if you want to serve the other gods, go ahead and serve them. But for me, and my house, my family, we're going to live and serve the Lord. Choose ye this day. 
Are you going to serve the empty gods of the world, or are you going to serve the true and the living God? It comes right down to it, and those down to it experiences come when life really stinks. But when life really stinks, you're on the verge of a victory that you can't even imagine or see because God wants the true heart without seeing what's on the other side to make a choice for him and a determination for him regardless of whether there's a blessing over there or not because I'm going to serve for God not because of his blessings but I'm going to serve God because he's the true and the living God. And if he never blesses me again, he's already blessed me way more than I deserve. Amen. And I'm going to still live for him because I want to go to heaven and I want to live there for the rest of my life. And I refuse to back down. I refuse to give up. I refuse to compromise. Come on, somebody say, shout amen to that. You look around in the religious world today, you'll see compromises everywhere. I just, this thing, I, I got an email. I don't want to tell you about it. It's just so gross. A pastor got married. A pastor in Washington, D.C., and he married his boyfriend. He's pastor in a church. Great preacher. Him and his first friend. And I, I, I'm grieved to even talk about it. And ladies and gentlemen, this world is compromising. It's going down. Who's going to stand? for God. Is it possible for life to get so bad that you give up and quit? Or can it be said that you made up your mind no matter what I have to deal with, no matter what others are doing, I am going to live a righteous life for God. With the real Davids that don't give up no matter how it looks, that don't give in no matter how it feels, where are the Davids that will go to their tent, have a prayer meeting, stir themselves up, encourage themselves in the Lord, and get direction from God? Because so, when you are in trouble, there's always direction. God has direction. You may not see it yet, but he's got it. And you need to seek him for it. And you'll find it. And God will help you through that deal. That's all I know how to do, folks. So would the real Davids please stand up. My tent, outside of my tent, it's dark. Outside of my tent, singers, you don't have to come. I want you to pray. Just park yourself in a chair and worship God. Just, just come right in there. Thank you. I'm in my tent. Oh, in Jesus' name. In 
Jesus' name. I need you, God. I need you. Oh, God. You're able to turn this situation around. I need you. I can't do it myself. Oh, but God, all things are possible to him that believeth. You're able to make a way. You're able to make a way. In the name of Jesus. Anybody want to come in my tent with me? Why don't you just pour down. If you'd like to come in my tent with me, just get in as close as you can. Just get in as close as you can. Come on, let's pray together. Let's encourage ourselves. God, you blessed me last week. God, you helped me with that other thing. I know you can help me with this. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It looks like it's impossible, God. But you're able, you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. You never leave us nor forsake us, God. You're going to get us through in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, I'd like you, those of you that have come into my tent, maybe you're just in the aisle. I know you can't get real close, but make a determination. Pray this prayer with me. God, give me courage. Help me to make a decisive decision that I will not compromise. I will not back down. I will stand for you. I will not give up. I will trust you. And I will see you make a way in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I hope you prayed that prayer or some prayer like it. Or pray it right now. Help me, Lord, to have courage. Help me to do what you want me to do. Help me not faint or be weary. Help me to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You'll never leave me, nor will you forsake me. Open up a door that I can't see yet. Open up a door and give me direction. You've got a plan for me. Who? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Somebody's getting it. Somebody's getting it. Somebody's getting it. Let's praise and pray in tongues for a minute in the tent. Let's pray in tongues in the tent. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not praying. Don't pray for a blessing. Pray that God will help you be strong. Don't, don't, don't pray for a blessing. Pray that you would be strong. In the name of Jesus. Now. Put your hand on your brother or sister's shoulder. Brothers to brothers, sisters to sisters. And pray strength into them right now. Let it flow through you to them. I'm going to be strong for God. I won't go back. I can't go back. In Jesus' name. It's got to come down to the individual. It comes down to you. It comes down to you. I won't go back. I can't go back.
Just a minute, come on down to the cafeteria and enjoy some good fellowship and wish my wife a happy birthday. In Jesus' name, before you do, I want you to know there's a blessing coming. God's going to work it out. Whatever it is you're dealing with, God's going to work it out. You're going to be amazed at how it happens. And here's what I'd like you to do in faith. I'd like you to give the Lord a high praise in just a minute. Just a minute. And be thankful. Be thankful for helping you. Be thankful for his companionship. And be thankful that he's helping you make it all the way. And when I get to three, let's just give God a thanksgiving offering like we haven't done for a long time. Ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to be 